uh, literally as soon as I like turned 18, yeah. I was ready to do it. Wow. And because it was late, he was like, oh, do you want a Mackey's? And I was like, uh, yeah. I was like uh, yeah, okay. So what kind yeah. of advice would you give to people if they're going to rock up a bit late? We had steak two or three times in the summer. Uh, we had, you know, like your, your banquet, your kind of meal. Yeah. We do it with the kids where it's like the last camp ship. And they had like artichoke and spinach dip. We had steak mash. Come on, camp's got some money. Oh, yeah. Like you, we, madness. I was at a Jewish camp, so it would be kosher. Oh, yeah. But... Uh, do you know what? We'll actually talk about types of camp and stuff uh, when we're chatting now. Yeah. But this is the first time I learned anything about um, mm. Judaism or stuff like that. So, yeah, I didn't know that kosher was, I might be wrong, but it was, you can't have meat and dairy. In, Together, in, yeah. In, in the and same then the one. meat has to be killed a certain way. Yeah, and I, I, I was just there like, uh, it, it, hard, it hardly makes a difference because when when you you get used to it, it's the same yeah. as anything. But I was craving a cheeseburger by oh, the end, you yeah. know. Like I'll be honest, on my days off, I was like, that's where I'll go. Yeah. But it's funny because those different types of camp, you only learn about that type of stuff when you actually get there. Mm -hmm. But maybe we'll actually chat about that now yeah. and everything. So I suppose first, I've probably no better place to start. So thanks very much, mate, for uh, joining. <laughs> it. It's always weird introducing these, isn't it? Because like we chat that much normally. Yeah. That when you then sit down and the cameras, you think, oh, how do I introduce and it and stuff? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So instead of me introducing you, maybe if you introduce yourself, uh, what you do for camp leaders um, and what camp you went to, where it was at and stuff. Yeah, I um, work in the sales team in camp leaders. Um, I'm quite lucky in the fact that I'll speak to the people that when they first sign up that are interested, it's more of just like I get to have a chat, Definitely. talk about the program. I literally spend all day talking about my camp and how much I enjoyed it and getting other people to go, um, along with like being dragged into TikToks and videos. I was gonna say, you're involved in everything, <laughs> everything. Yeah. Um, but I went to Camp Winner Do in Massachusetts. Um, in, it was like near Pittsfield, never heard of it, <laughs> ever. Yeah. Everyone says the same as yeah, well. Yeah, you just don't have a clue where it is. Um, but it was surprisingly a big town, but not. Okay. Like you were really felt in the middle of nowhere, like you'd just fields and fields. But then it is, isn't it? we did have like a town with like your Walmart, your Target. Um, oh, what's the thrift shop called? Oh, I know which one you mean as well. The blue. Yeah, um, I know which one you mean. Goodwill. There you go. Yeah. Byron was yeah, right onto that. Right, he was yeah. there. Go. That's where I lived. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone does though, don't they? That's 100%. the best place. It was unreal. You bring all sorts over with you. You'll wear about two different things, and then you're like, "Well, I'm not wearing that. It's good. I'm gonna have to go and get something yeah. else." But yeah, that's a savior. That. I needed like a whole new suitcase after. Yeah. Like Goodwill. I ugh, I got so many jumpers, t-shirts, and it was like two dollars, and I was like, "Okay." It ended up being some of your favorite stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. living it. Where was the, so did you, I'm guessing Massachusetts, did you fly into New York? JFK, yeah. yeah. and then what, you got on the big yellow school bus and or was no, it was a bit cause, different? No, because I was early arriving to camp. Yes. Um, I basically had to get there myself um, and meet them in like Pittsfield-ish. Yeah. And it was quite late when I landed. Um, I think I landed at five, but by the time of like getting your baggage, um, like the customs, you think that was super quick. Yeah. They literally looked at my DS form and my visa and my passport and went, yep, cool, have fun at camp. Flew through. And just flew through, got my bags and went from there. Went, yeah. Do you know what? So, this is one thing that I definitely want to bring up because we've spoke about. I know you had a mental type of build up uh, to it because, correct me if I'm wrong, you initially applied, was it during all COVID or just yeah. before that? Yeah, I think 2020 was 2020. the first year that I like signed up literally as soon as I like turned 18 yeah. I was ready to do it Boss. where I was like sign me up and I think just my first summer I turned 18 I was like I'm gonna give it a give it a little bit yeah signed up straight away was ready watched every YouTube video possible <laughs> the get lot. me there and then COVID <laughs> it was all the way because quite a few people applied it could have even been with that one and then it got pushed back Same one again, year yeah. as, as, and that was that what happened yeah, to you yeah two years it was just because I was like, yeah, keep me on. Rolled it over to 2021. And then I was already had my visa appointment. Yeah. So I'd been to the London embassy, already done that. And they just didn't lift the restrictions. So 
rolled it again till this rolled summer and got there eventually. So this is one thing like we spoke about yesterday and I actually didn't know this until you told me. So I was like, right, you're going to have to go through this. You decided dead late, didn't you, that you yeah. were going to camp. Now we're filming and it's what, the 23rd of May today. Last year, it was about the same time, wasn't it? Was yeah, it just it was, a bit before that or? It, it definitely wasn't before. Um, Cause I think the cutoff's normally like the 5th of May. Yeah. And it was, I was definitely like three weeks uh. after that <laughs> easily. Cause I remember like live chatting in and speaking to someone in the team. And I was like, oh, hi, can I go to camp? I really want to go. Yeah. And they were like, oh, the deadline's kind of gone. You're too late. And yeah. I was gutted because I think I just had my heart set on. I'm just going to go to graduation. Yeah. Graduation is the best thing since sliced bread. And I think just with the COVID thing, I was over it. Yeah. You were just like, nah. Couldn't be bothered yeah. with going to graduation. I was proper weighing up because it was one day or the entire summer and have a boss time. And I was like, oh, yeah. ship me to camp. Yeah, Gone. yeah. <laughs> Do you know what? It's funny because I'm guessing, especially with a lot of people that are going who will be students, they'll kind of be thinking about that. But I'm guessing you're obviously delighted with the fact you went, yeah. do you know what? I made the I'm right decision. I'm so pro skip graduation. <laughs> you can do it in August. You can do it in November. You can literally push it back. Yeah. I was fully, if you speak to people on the phone and they're like, oh, I've got graduation. I'm like, skip it. Yeah. Today. Yeah. For, you can do for it when the, you're back. For the sake of a summer. For a photo. Yeah. Well, that's, do you know what? That's what it is. I was yeah. just, half the time you just sat through waiting for other people's names to get called. Yeah. Then you go up for a bit and you're like, and you're all sweaty. Wait, I stayed here for a summer just for that one yeah. moment. But I get it on the, on the flip side mm -hmm. as well. If people have worked towards it. So it's totally up to them. But I suppose if you know that you've got the summer plans lined up, yeah. then it makes sense. Now, I want to kind of go back to that time frame there. So eventually you got in touch and someone, I'm guessing at Camp Leaders went, we'll, we'll do what we can to kind of yeah. get it. Now, I know you outside of this set and I know you're a planner <laughs> and you put events on. So you're someone who's very methodical and yeah. you get stuff done. My head would have absolutely exploded if I went, I tell you what, I'm going to graduation one day and now I'm going right. In fact, now two weeks later, I'm going to America. How did you comprehend deal with all of that within a two week sort of time frame yeah. or whatever it was it was a madness because as soon as they said to me like i think i can get you to camp yeah because i was just like to be dead organized so i had all my stuff from the past year applying yeah where they were able to be like i reckon we can do this let's get you interviewing i just think i went in because i'd like said i like to be planned organized yeah. everything needs to be sorted like i'm the planner of like the group yeah and I think I just had in my head of, I just want to get to camp, yeah. not bothered if no I'm a what. day late. I'm like, I've come this far. They've said I can go. If I'm late, I'm late. Who cares? Yeah. Get me to camp. Yeah. Like if I can go, I want to go. Yeah. I'm ready just to, I think just play it by ear and just kind of, if they were to text me tomorrow and go, can you get on a flight? I was like, yep, get me on it. Just like, wing it. Just literally get me to camp Too long. what was it like documents wise did everything did you have that all kind of in time so, um, or was it like oh, I to... so i got my ds form and stuff through like camp leaders got that through to me rapid yeah. um and then i flew to belfast and back in a day so okay. i literally got my ds form in the post the next day hopped on a flight to belfast like 7 a.m oh was that where your the embassy appointment yeah, oh, yeah okay. the actual embassy I'm with you. okay flew there um, got me bus into Belfast, got another bus to the embassy, went in. It was tiny because I'd done the London one. You were and used that. And that was such like, not that it was overwhelming, it was just big. Like it was the queues to security and then obviously waiting to get it up and there's all these people ready to interview you. There's it a was, lot going on. There's a lot, yeah. yeah. Um, and the Belfast one, it was like going into a GP's office. There was one guy stood on security and he was like, oh, yeah, just leave your bag there. That's all good. I haven't been to it. Is it that it small? It was lovely. Oh, no It's way. such a nice, it looks like a country house, like kind of a state thing. Yeah. And you just walk up this nice little path round the back and you just go in. There's literally one woman on a desk. No way. Takes your documents. You just sit and wait. Um, I have no idea how long I was in there because you don't have your phone. Oh, you yeah. Your electronic devices. Yeah. Um, but it actually, it probably wasn't that long. And... They literally just asked me like, oh, what camp are you going to? Cool, you'll get it back in a couple of days. Jumped on a bus back, got on a flight. I think I got on my flight at like half one, two o'clock. Oh, so you were, I thought you were going to say it's like an 8 p.m. You get no, back at silly no, o'clock. I, I was, I, I probably should have waited a bit longer just in case. But I was like, do you know what? Done I reckon it. I can do it. Oh, boss. And 
flew back that night and then obviously then posting it back i had it posted back to manchester yeah um i think when i spoke to camp and stuff i was aiming for the 20th that okay. was like my date the 20th of june was when they were like if you can get here for that that's ideal if not if it's day after two days it's fine whatever um got a notification they were like oh your um passport's gonna be in dx for the 20th i was like boss i almost booked my flight like i was so close to pushing the button and booking that flight and imagine then, if you had as well oh uh, no i got there and it just wasn't there they were like oh it's still on the back of a truck it could be it could be unloaded tonight and be ready in the morning you can't rely on the delivery companies no but they they did say they were like i think it'll be here ready for you in the morning i was like if i come at 7 a.m is it going to be here and they were like oh yeah <laughs> and uh, do you know what i think at that point i went through the thing of i was like oh yeah screw it yeah. literally 11 o'clock on the 20th i went right i'm booking my flights yeah booked that flight drove got up in the morning 7 a.m drove to dx and it was there and i went straight from the dx in manchester straight to the airport with your on bags a plane, and everything with my bags with the dogs in the back that's wild and just was like gone <laughs> that's wild but it shows as well where you just kind of go do you know what sometimes if it's meant to work you'll find yeah. a way of doing it won't you so once you've got on the plane you're flying over and everything like that i'm sure you're buzzing the fact that you've got kind of through all of that yeah. and you're dead excited were you getting to camp when camp were expecting you or were you a couple of days after or so i think the original like arrival date for all staff was something like the 14th or the i think it might have been the 16th of okay. june yeah so i was a good like five days late so cool. i got i got there the 21st i think yeah and i got there in the evening so i had to get a bus myself from jfk to yeah. pittsfield um, and then my camp picked me up. It was literally just a guy in a minivan. Yeah. Um, funny enough, who went to Liverpool. No way. Yeah, went to the same uni, was chatting. Oh, and then out. because it was late, he was like, oh, do you want a Mackey's? And I was like, yeah. Uh, I was like, uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> um, I just thought, like, yeah, that must have been you know, a weird scenario. There, I'm yeah. like, um, I don't mind. Um, do I say yes? Do I do that? Yeah. And then took us to Mackey's on the way home. Brilliant. That was the most baffling thing ever. Just looking at the menu, I was like, uh huh anything yeah. honestly um and then got to camp at like i think it must have been like 10 11 o'clock at night and yeah. just went straight into took me to a cabin yeah i i just appeared in this <laughs> bunk and i think people just came in and was like who oh is who's this there's someone here yeah. and yeah it was it was mad that turnaround the, the turnaround yeah it was just I, I don't even think i'd actually realized like i was sat on a plane going to camp yeah I don't think I'd, it wasn't real until I actually got there. Did you prefer that, do you think? Like, do you know, because it happened that yeah. quick or? I think I had less time to stress yeah. about the little things. That's what I was thinking, Because I think yeah. in the previous years where I thought I was going, I'd watched every single video, yeah. tried to buy every single thing on every single packing list. Oh, yeah. Um, I think I preferred the unknown of yeah. just kind of, I'm going to turn up yeah. and either way i'm gonna enjoy it like yeah you go into it in the mindset of you get out what you put in really yeah so yeah i enjoyed like the last minute rush of it chaos, all because i didn't, I didn't have a minute to stop and yeah. be like oh what about yeah you know there was no reservations of it i was just like right let's go you have to yeah. well you had no alternative it, didn't I was you like, i'm getting there i was gonna say yeah and i suppose after waiting as long as what you had because it wasn't just oh i'm waiting for me ds like yeah. you had all the covid and pushing back yeah. and everything to deal with but i think it's actually cool to chat about that because there's going to be quite a few people who are flying out within the next two three weeks and there may be some people who have had their sort of documents uh there might be a delay or they're going to arrive a bit later and stuff i know that means that you might be arriving a little later than i don't know say where you should do and some others what was your experience of arriving, say, three, four days later than others? And what kind of advice would you give to people if they're going to rock up a bit late? Um, I didn't think there was much difference in it. Gosh. Obviously, I think the biggest worry was like, oh, I'm going to miss a lot of staff orientation. Are people going to have like friendship groups, yeah. little like clicks, whatever it is. And I think that was the only thing where like on the bus to camp, I was like, oh, what if everyone's already got like their friends? Yeah. Um, but it just wasn't like that. Like I appeared in my bunk and all the girls that were in my bunk were lovely. They yeah. were like, oh, so this is what time breakfast is. Yeah. This is what's this. This is what we're doing tomorrow. Um, but I think it was, we had a couple of days before the campers got there and they'd 
done most like the, the kind it, of the first bit of training. First bit of training. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and but you pick it up, don't you? Yeah, like as I you think go. If I'd have had the training, I don't think it'd have changed how like my summer was yeah. in terms of like knowing things. I think yeah. as soon as the kids get there, you're instantly in the swing of it. Like yeah, you're moving on to like day to day. You you just kind of yeah. everyone's in the same boat of you all kind of go there a bit clueless. Yeah. In terms of like you don't know what day to day is like, don't know what's going on, and you just kind of pick it up yeah. as you go. And it was nice because I think because a lot of people noticed that I just appeared me and my purple hair just kind of popped up on camp one day <laughs> um a lot of people made the effort to be like hi I'm yeah blah blah, blah. and which is great and it, it was That's yeah for it you. was really nice because everyone everyone was just so happy to be there yeah and I think I was just excited that I managed to get there and everyone would be like, oh, how come you're late? And I'm like, Is that like well. Weight, <laughs> weight off the shoulders, yeah, weren't it? When definitely. you put like you put your bag in and you just kind of go, oh, I don't have to rush anymore. Yeah. Amazing. It's funny you mentioned about being in the same boat as well because everyone that I spoke to kind of this season on the podcast, Stefan, Courtney, Meg, everyone went, do you know what? At the end of the day, regardless of what time you get there, regardless of what camp you go to, you are in the same boat, aren't you? Yeah. Which is a really cool thing. And kind of wanting to then touch on that from there so you are going back so is this i can't remember you telling me was this is it your second year yeah that, it'll be the second one going back when are you flying out it can't be long now 13th of june so there's a good chance literally, you may bump into a yeah, few people literally not that long there's so many people flying on those dates like yeah. between the 12th 13th 14th um no we're, rushing. Go, we're going a day early though so we're staying in a hotel um where the camp's going to pick us up from first brilliant and there's there's about six, seven of us, and yeah. they're just people I've met through camp leaders that are coming to my camp. First um, timers, like yeah, first oh, timers. Um, I don't think I'm travelling with a single returner no way. to camp. It's all first timers that I've just met through, through like staff group chats, and, and yeah. we've all booked our flights together. Seats are all booked together. Boss. Hotel night in New York beforehand, and Brilliant. then we're getting picked up in the the 14th ish so you're going to be that person now do you know like when you were rushing you got there last year and you're like oh my god i've got no idea what's going on you'll be the person now putting the arm around people I, i'm the one that's supposed to be organized. i got a text the other day telling me that i'm going to be a bus counselor for it oh, no and i'm way. like i didn't have a i didn't even go on the bus last yeah. year and now you want me to so-called like in fact be in charge of it yeah i was going to say tell people what bus counselor is because that's even a mad thing itself isn't it like it's one of those things where I, I wasn't on the bus. Yeah. I, just got on a, I just got on some random flick She's bus. She's a bus counselor with no bus counselling no experience. Counselor, yeah. Um, and it, I think it's just, I hope, well, I presume it's just getting people on the bus and getting them to camp. It's, um, it, it is a cool part. I, I remember kind of going on that bus on the first time and I, a load of people, I'd, even though I'd travelled before, I'd never been to camp. Yeah. So I'm sat like next to loads of other people and we're all looking around and going, it's a bit mad, this, isn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah, I think everyone kind of sits there and is like, uh, are, you, are you going to camp? A lot of people met in the airport that's on the where, way to camp, yeah, which is mad. That's where we, I met a load as well, yeah. That's mental. There's a few There's a few people that we're not traveling with on the same flight, yeah, yeah. but they're going to be in the airport at the same time. They yeah. literally get on a flight, I think, about an hour before us. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be sat in the airport with this big group of us. It's cool. Though, and then we'll, meet, we'll be like, meet you there. That's what I would say as well. I think you just mentioned it, but for people to defo get onto like the Facebook groups yeah, or definitely. What, whatever social media you're using, because um, when I first went, it was a girl called Imo. Shout out Imo <laughs> as well, because she was like the camp mum for everyone as well. But I like, I hadn't been before. I knew no one. And then she was like, oh no, you um, jump in this group, speak to this person. We're all meeting. And then we got to the airport and we were flying from, pretty sure it was manchester yeah and then there was like 10 of us on the same flight so we were all like before and it just took the edge off yeah because you kind of look around and you're like are you going to camp yeah and even there's people there that are not going to your camp but i think you can just sense it yeah you know when you see people with all the bags they're, and they're, they're on their own a, looking a bit lost like they're, they're um, a camp person do yeah you know, do you know what i went <laughs> i went up to someone because i was like i defo reckon i'm by the way i'm meant to wear contacts and I, <laughs> I forgot my contacts and i didn't have my glasses with me so I looked at someone, I was like, I've spoke to them. Like, I was like, I've spoke to them. They're going to camp. And I went up to them, I was like, go, excuse me, you're going to summer camp. They looked round and like, just didn't even speak English. And I was like, oh no, this oh, is so embarrassing. Oh so if you're going to make sure you choose somewhere in the airport to meet and go, yeah, yeah. I'll meet you there yeah. and everything. So what was the camp you went to again? Winner Doom. 
you've actually kind of got a cool perspective, haven't you? Because Winnedoo is, it's an all boys camp. Yeah, so it's an all boys camp, but mixed staff. Mixed staff. So talk us through that, because that's a very unique perspective. Uh, and I've kind of got my own perspective on types of camp. I know a lot of people will be going to a type of camp, which might be quite a new experience yeah. for them. They not, might not be something that they're used to. Um, how was that for you? I think it was a mad one because obviously with the build-up of going to camps yeah. i've watched every youtube video looking at all the different types yeah i went into it with i want to go to a mixed gens camp yeah like i want the balance of obviously having the girls and the boys yeah um i think i don't know why it was just like ingrained to me that that was the camp that i had to go to yeah and then i actually interviewed with an all girls camp and an all boys camp um ended up going for the all boys camp just because i think the interview itself it was really nice because they made you feel really welcome yeah, straight yeah. away. And I think debating on what camp you go to, that first interview with the director, I feel like you kind of know in G a way. Gives you an, you, like, yeah, in your if gut, they make you, know. you feel welcome, yeah. that's the best sign ever yeah. of camp. And I hadn't, I'd never thought about an all boys camp. Yeah. That was definitely not at my list. Like I just presumed like an all boys camp, it's going to be male staff. Yeah no females, whatever, um, and had the interview and just really liked the sounds of the camp in yeah. general. And I think I was quite lucky because there was a few little benefits to it, of yeah, course. Yeah. So I'd obviously gone into it with, I'm going to stay in a bunk with the kids. You know, I was ready for all that. Oh, you, so you would have got, uh, did you get your own? Yeah, oh. so we had, um, I think it's on camp, bonus there, there was about it? three female staff bunks. Okay. So all the female counsellors, we just all stayed together. Brilliant. And all the lads stayed in the bunks with the kids. Right, and yeah. it was such a mad but nice experience because you had that best of both worlds yeah. of we all got, we all had our own bunks without Amazing. the kids. Yeah. Um, but I think it was nice in the evenings, you know, we could just chat. Chill chat and everything. You know, yeah. chill, just talk about everything. Yeah. Um, and I think it was a real like social kind of community. Yeah, in a way. yeah. Not I'd to agree. sound too cheesy. No, I'd agree. Yeah. Um, and it was nice because you properly got to know people. Like in my bunk, I had, um, I had a really good friend, Caitlin, who from South Africa. Yeah. Um, and she was lifeguarding, and yeah. she was in one of the other age divisions where I wouldn't have really seen much of her on camp if we didn't live in a bunk together, and that was really nice. And there was a photographer in my bunk um there was nurses in our bunk oh. and there was other like general counselors so it was really mixed it wasn't Flex. just a set like activity area so we really got to meet lots more people on top of that i think yeah because i went as a general and i loved being a general counselor because of the social aspect of it you you're going around all these activities so i was meeting all these people and i think with me being late as well, it was really nice to go to all those activities and be yeah. like, hi. Got you, you know, involved with everything, didn't 100%. it? A hundred percent. It was so social. Yeah. And I loved it. Like, yeah. loved my boys. I was with the seven and eight-year-olds. Yeah. And it's funny because when they first come, especially as a Brit, yeah. Um, I think we were like, oh, do you want some water? And I've never seen a child look at me so baffled. What did you just say? <laughs> like and they that. were like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Or when you ask them to put something in the bin yeah. and they go, the bin. bin. What's the bin? <laughs> and I think they kind of catch on to it and yeah. they'll still go, hmm? Yeah. And they go from these boys that were like looking at you a bit funny because you've just said water really yeah. strange to like not even three weeks in and they're going, night, love you. Yeah. Or, oh, we need to cuddle before bed. Like yeah. I need a hug. Yeah. And it it's mad because you spend so much time with your kids. Yeah. Um, but, there was literally about 60, I think there's about 60 kids in like the age division itself. Okay. And you had your own bunk of about six. Yeah. So they still had their two male counselors in there. And then I was part of that bunk as well. Okay. And even though I wasn't sleeping inside the bunk, I was still fully part of that bunk. And it was a really like close experience because you still had your core group of kids, but yeah. there was all the other kids and all the different bunks that you still got to know really well. Yeah. And they all had their funny little traits and off, yeah. little ways around it. Um, it's, th it's those ones as well. Like I, before going, I didn't kind of, and it's again, it sounds cheesy and it's, it's not that I'm trying to be it, but I didn't expect I'd get as much out of it as what I did when it came to that side of things where you do kind of form those friendships yeah. and stuff with, uh, with your group. And because 
the group that I was in a bunk, I was a, a powerboat specialist, but I was then in in the cabin and stuff with the kids. There was me, three other counsellors. And y- you realise that these kids are going through a real sort of formative time and everything where they're, they're developing their personality and their behaviours yeah. around people and stuff. And the fact that you can actually have a really cool impact on that as well. And by the end of it, they might skit you in the beginning yeah, for your definitely. accent. But by the end of it, you're like there's a mutual appreciation like you were just saying yeah then. definitely it's like football boots you yeah. go, go and put your football boots on and your kids come out in soccer outfit um in american football uh, yeah. outfit, and you're like what are you doing you've got football and they're like i'm in football i'm in football what are you talking and about and it, it's those little moments where you're like oh no i'm gonna have to it's that uh, cultural difference yeah. but you, you the little you, things yeah you then both have an impact on each other don't you yeah when, when you're on the phone to people and um do you ever get people who are kind of a bit worried about their type of camp where they're thinking, yeah. oh, well, what does traditional mean or what does this mean or that mean? Yeah, I think that's probably the biggest thing is speaking to people and they're like, because we have traditional and there's also sports camps. Yeah. A sport camp and a traditional are pretty much the same kind of yeah. thing. Like you have your specialty camps, but they're all still traditional. Yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people have a set preference on like single sex camps. I think a lot of people kind of, are a bit unsure of them yeah. because they think it's just going to be that single sex. But obviously, all boys camp, we still had female staff. Yeah, yeah. And I think it was nice because we still had that little group of us where, you know, we could all relate and yeah. we're surrounded by all these you still boys got that community, all day. Yeah. yeah. I, I think, yeah, it's, I personally, I'd always kind of say to people to keep such an open mind as well because I, uh, I've mentioned this before in a podcast, but I went to a Jewish camp and for me, I knew absolutely nothing about the religion, but I was completely open-minded to learning about it. And then when I was there, it was essentially just like any other uh, American yeah. sort of summer camp. Like you'd have Shabbat on Friday and stuff, and uh, which was a great meal and everything. I was like, this is <laughs> this is boss. But would you kind of kind of say to people as well, be open-minded about yeah. those types of camps? I wouldn't so, have ended up at my camp if I'd have gone through the normal process. Uh, yeah, Because yeah. I know I'd have put in my preferences being like traditional camp. Yeah. Um, Even if I'd have gone on review with a camp that was single sex, I'd have probably just kind of gone, no, not Definitely. interested, want to mix camp. Yeah. And I think it's sad because I would have fully missed out on going to my camp completely. And I think there's a few people I speak to on the phones. Um, And I think... I think it's more so when I speak to a lot of girls that have been pl- like on review with an all boys yeah. camp and they're like, oh, I don't want to go. And I'm like, it's such a nice small little community because yeah. there's obviously you're kind of the minority on of the camp course. Yeah, yeah. where it's, you're all relatable. You know, you're all in such close like quarters in general Definitely. and living together that it shouldn't put you off because yeah. it was honestly like the best summer and I wouldn't be going back um, yeah. if I didn't enjoy it. And yeah, I don't think you should be put off by the type of camp at all because yeah. we use all these defining words like you've got religious camp. It doesn't mean that you're expected to go and completely change yourself or it's going to be really full on. Definitely. You know, each camp's different. And yeah, like don't just aim for those mixed sex camps because a lot of the time they're still going to have a mixed sex staff yeah. on it. I love, in fact, I love the word you just used then when you kind of went like, don't use, let those words kind of define yeah. about the camp. I think that's really a cool way of describing it because I think if you take that out of it and be open to all of those, you'll end up going, I'll tell you what, this is me new home away from home yeah, now and definitely. stuff. So that's a great cool, um, way to look at it. And I think those types of problems which people have, and understandably, we're all kind of kind of overthink yeah. before going. What will be really cool is this section now, we're going to do things where... And I've got no idea what this may be either. So this could be absolutely anything where we'll answer a question or we'll react to something which By- Byron's going to send through to us. We've got no idea. Uh, and you're almost going to be an agony ant okay. or a, a reaction uh, head to this as well. So if you bear with me one moment. Okay, I'm scared now. Yeah, I was going to say, we'll have to we'll have to see what it is. But um, so we've gone on to it here. I'll read it out. Okay. <laughs> and then we'll take it from there. Is that cool? Yep. Okay, so... In fact, this sounds like something that you would actually have a lot of experience in already. So that that's good. So uh, female counsellor in boys' cabin, any advice? And the message is, hi all, just looking for some advice to prepare this summer. 
The camp I'm working for this year has me, 21-year-old female, in a cabin with seven boys. I'm not sure what the ages are yet, but I know it'll be anywhere from 8 to 13 years old. Now, this isn't my first time being a counsellor, so I'm not terribly worried. However, it will be my first, sorry, it will be my first time not being in a cabin of girls. So I was wondering if there was anything I should do to prepare or if I should expect anything different. I feel silly being a bit nervous since they're just kids after all and I work with boys and girls in my current job but I just want to make sure everyone is comfortable and happy this summer. Thanks. Well, fair enough for them. Yeah. Thinking straight away about others before themselves which is lovely but um, bit of a long question. I know, yeah. Um, but yeah, any sort of advice on that one? Um, well, I was 21 when I went my first year of going into the old boys camp. Um, I think it's normal to be nervous because... Yeah. Even though, like, a lot of people have worked with both genders in camps, yeah. um, not in camps, in general, yeah, yeah. like, before going out, I think it's the intimidation of it's just solely boys running around yeah. everywhere. I can imagine. Um, I think when you get there, you find yourself that there'll be, there'll be boys. They'll think they don't need a girl's help. I can do it on my own. I think that first week, don't be put off if they're a little bit more, like, I'm an independent boy, even at the age of seven, eight years of age, and they still need you to tie their lace. Yeah. They'll be like, I'll do it myself. And then... And then trip up a yeah. second later. <laughs> not, do you know what? Not even a week, a couple of days, they yeah. think they are yeah. like these strong, confident little boys. And after a couple of days, when they're all homesick, the female counselors in particular, they're the first ones they come running to um, for like... A mum's hug type yeah, of yeah, when yeah. they're like missing home yeah. or they just want a bit of comfort. I think sometimes they'll be a bit embarrassed to go to some of the male counsellors. And I think it's nice because we got to see that, like that soppy side yeah. of them in a way where you were able to connect with them and you really like bonded with them. And even in like little instances, sometimes because you'll have had that chat with them, you'll find that if they're upset again, you'll be able to comfort them more. And obviously, hopefully make them happy again yeah, definitely, um, definitely. and cheer them up really in sort of a more sense where they're, they're not thinking about home and stuff um, when they've already spoke to you before because they don't want to, they don't want to bring it up. Um, but even things like they're just like tying the shoelaces. They're not, they're not going to ask for help. They'll sit there and struggle yeah. and they'd rather walk out the door and go, Oh, it's tied. And just that little thing of tying their laces guarantee if you tie one shoelace they're coming back to you every single time they need a shoelace tying absolutely every single time and to be fair my my favorite thing was taking gibbets for crocs oh. i used to bribe my kids all the time with a gibbet <laughs> it, honestly those little eight-year-old boys they would brush their teeth so quick if i said i'll give you a gibbet and then that's it done and then that's it done instantly Love um it. but they are cheeky yeah very cheeky but i think after a couple of days they like you'll be fine. Yeah. It's not as intimidating once you're actually into it. I think it's the build up yeah. of like they're all just going to arrive. Yeah, it, it's not as intense as what you may think. No, because they're yeah. just there to enjoy it, just as you are. Oh, do you know what? Having not been saying an all boys camp and not having a female perspective on, on on that, it's really interesting to hear that side of it where you kind of mention how it's a different kind of emotional uh, support and yeah. stuff, which I didn't even think about. But obviously, yeah, I tell us lads, we are terrible at it, even at a young age upwards of kind of, yeah, I might not chat to some of the other boys in case, you know, it's a bit of bravado and in case they think I'm silly. But it's really interesting to hear that that may then be that type of support that you can provide as yeah, well. Yeah, I think you just make those little kind of connections because I didn't remotely think about that side of it going into it. I thought, you know, we're just going to take them activities, have all laughs and giggles, yeah. sunshine and rainbows all day, every day. And there's that tiny little percent where obviously they're still really young. Yeah. And, you know, they are away from home because our kids are going to be there. They're there the whole seven weeks. Yeah. They don't, you know, go home. And I think especially with last year, we weren't able to do visiting day just with COVID and stuff. Yeah. And I think that was where, where we'd made all those connections with the kids was really good because you know if so some of them did get a little bit upset and yeah. it was having that comfort of they were the ones to come to you when they were upset or when they wanted to talk about something you know even when they get letters from home you know they may play it off all oh yeah, yeah. and then they'd come to you in the evening and be like 
yeah. I'm a bit sad I miss mum. And, you know, it was nice to have that, like, less of a working kind of, you know, you're not there just to do a job. Yeah. They are kids. <laughs> yeah. So one thing I do want to talk about is the fact that it's really hard for people to picture summer camp unless they've kind of got a picture in front of them. Because I guarantee whatever people think it is like, it's, it's not, not going to no. be like, is it? So if you don't mind, I wouldn't mind heading onto your <laughs> Instagram. Is that all right with yeah, you? Yeah, that's fine. And then we'll pick a picture or a couple of pictures and you talk us through the story. Is that okay. all right? Yeah. So I'm going to go on to here. If I head on to Instagram <laughs> and I'll hit screen record as well. Are people all right to see yeah, your yeah. username? No, Is that cool? Good. So it's just travel anyway. <laughs> that's it. So let's go on to where you're at. Fab. So I'm just going to kind of scroll through mm -hmm. here. I'll move this so I'm not absolutely on top of the mic. Um, okay. So you can kind of tell when uh, all the camp ones start coming up yeah. and everything because there's such a like a definitive personality to camp, yeah. isn't it? There was so many though. I don't think I barely posted any. Like I didn't, I barely posted any while I was at camp. I think oh. I put a few at the end and that was it. You've got some cool ones here. <laughs> You've got some cool ones. Now this one here, this... Oh, you're having a ball of a time. So talk us through this one. And uh, I think Byron will be popping it up now uh, on the screen what it is. So um, that, yeah. That's my favorite photo. That's like my work photo. That's a boss photo. one. Though. I love that. I, I don't know why, but it, I've never liked a photo as much as I like that one. So every Friday we have like what's called campership. Yeah. Um, and it's basically, we, it's a mad concept. You know, now I'm thinking about it because it's just like not something you do every what, day. What is it? So we'd all basically, our age divisions, we'd probably have a theme of some sort. So that week it was blue and white and we all got given a t-shirt that was blue that said campship. Um, we basically run like sprint from our bunks yeah. all the way down to the theater hall thing. Um, they'd be, we'd have the band, they'd be playing music. Um, you'd run in, you'd all dance about and then we'd have awards where if the kids, like every specialist activity I'd give out, like if someone had done something really well, oh, nice. they'd win that like, item. So like a little awards do. Yeah. Okay. And it was every Friday. So it was for the week. So like, for example, swimming, if there was certain tests they could do where they could get like silver, platinum, whatever. Uh, and they'd get, they'd get like a t-shirt if they completed it. And there was some weeks where like the seven and eight year olds would do the best. Like they'd done this test and passed it really well and they'd get their own t-shirt. Boss. Or there was like, golden soccer cleats oh, would brilliant. be like for that week um craft shack they had oh it was so cool they had the really? um crayon trophy wow. like they'd made out of crayons that was like the highlight wood shop they got their own personalized bat that our wood shop guy made brilliant it was boss and it was such a mad experience because you'd literally just dance about there was the one song that had come on and you'd Everyone jump on, you'd mad. have a kid on your shoulders yeah. You'd be jumping in a circle. Um, Brown Eyed Girl was always the go-to every classic. week. Classic. Same songs. Yeah. You're bouncing up and down with a child on your shoulders. <laughs> um, Brilliant. And then I think that was just when we were all bouncing about, to be honest, when the songs were all on. I was um, going to say you were in the middle of having a ball yeah, there. That's I, fantastic. It's one of my favorite. It's got to be my favorite photo from the summer. That's um, amazing. Campership was the most unreal experience because it was so it was so enjoyable and fun yeah. but then at the end um it was quite like a meaningful thing so yeah. get a bit deep like yeah, um, yeah, yeah. so they had a kid that used to go to camp called ethan friedman and he's got his own um he's got his own fund so it's like the ethan friedman fund yeah. and he basically had he like had condition and was ill and he spent his last summer at camp before he passed and every Friday campership they would play uh, Wonderwall uh -huh. and you'd all stand, you'd have all the staff in a circle around your age division and we'd all sing Wonderwall and that was, it was surreal because you're all standing there and you just take a minute to appreciate the week itself and then just to like reflect on where you are, what's going on and it was, it was, it was so emotional because yeah. it was so like, you just had that minute to think and it was every single Friday and I've, I think I've never listened to Wonderwall the same since. Yeah. It's that one thing where you hear it and you're like... It's got real meaning Yeah, it's to got it. a meaning to it compared to before camp where it was just a tune that got played on. Oh, <laughs> um, 
and it was mad because camp shit was it, it gave you time where the whole camp was there to just enjoy it and week after week i think the last one you kind of like well, we've not got any more left yeah like madness it just goes by in a blink so of fast eye. the days are long and the weeks are short that's the that's the famous one isn't that, it the, yeah that was our go-to saying every day and it's so true definitely would well, you know what that i felt was a lovely little way to kind of <laughs> round that up and end it on that one there now the very last thing i'd like to do because you've got so much good info and being someone that's going back for a, a, another year now you can kind of pass all that return of knowledge yep. on so Loads of people are going to be flying out in the next two, three, four weeks, whatever it may be. It'd be class if I could get like five top tips, okay. um, whether it's for people who are going to be there a bit late, whether it's for people for first time, whether it's people who are nervous, whatever they may be. If I put you on the spot now, what would those five be? Um, I think if you're arriving late, don't stress. Just yeah. be, it sounds so cringy, be in the moment. Like just appreciate that you're there, whether you're late or not and speak to absolutely everyone. Like even if it's you arrive at 11 o'clock at night and there's just someone in the office there and it's just popping in saying hi, um, just making that connection with someone and having a face that you've spoke to before. Um, take more nice clothes. No, that interesting. Would be, that's, I think that's like one of my biggest things when I speak to people on the phone is take a few more nice clothes because there's a lot of times where you'll have those evenings off where you just want to feel normal where you're not in a camp t-shirt and shorts yeah. all the time, I think. And then you've got your travels afterwards anyway, but taking a few extra nice little bits and there's a few times throughout camp where you're going to get dressed up. We had song fest where all the kids would write their own song and perform them on stage and we all dressed up for that and it was really nice and like the end of season, like banquet, getting dressed up. It was really nice to have that. Um, I always tell everyone to pack loads of spray deodorant. Uh, everyone yeah. always laughs at me in the office because I'm always like, have you packed all your bottles of spray deodorant? You'll use them. Because it's so expensive. It's like $10 a bottle. Crazy. Um, and, oh, I'm trying to think. So Just, what's that? At three? Yeah. Two more? Um, Underpack. Don't take too many clothes. <laughs> I'm going to tell everyone not to take any clothes, too many clothes and I'm still going to overpack. But I lived in the same pair of like, same three pairs of denim shorts. Everyone does it. Yeah. Everyone does it. Yeah. Same three pair of denim shorts. And we got given t-shirts from camp anyway. So I think they just added to our clothes, like having those extra four t-shirts that you had. And it was like, uh, I've got so many. Um, but it's still nice to have like a couple of colorful things. Absolutely. Um, and I'm trying to think. Booking a flexible flight ticket. I could talk about flights for days. That cost me not doing that. Yeah. I should have done it. Yeah. So many people don't book flexible or will only book a single. And I booked a flexible one. I think it was like Aer Lingus smart ticket. So you got like your baggage and everything. And it meant that you could bring your flight earlier or push you it could back. change it. But just pay the difference. Yeah. So I brought mine forward like three days and only paid about £60. And that was such a lifesaver because... So many people then had to book flights out there and or you had that one date you had to get back for. I think And they're bu they're busy flights. Busy, yeah. Very and you wanna know what you're doing and yeah. where you are because you could travel anywhere and having that flexibility was class. Like it it allowed me to do everything I wanted and not rush home yeah. straight away. You weren't just tied into one particular yeah, definitely. date. Oh, do you know what? That is a great little way to round it up <laughs> that. I think you, there's some really good ones there as well. So first off, mate, thanks very much for kind of jumping on and Anytime. stuff. You're obviously going to be knocking about Camp Leader's office for the yeah. next few weeks because you cover some really cool stuff and you've got such a unique perspective on it. So without throwing you under the bus and making you have loads of phone calls, if anyone does fancy ringing up and wants to go through, I'm sure they can just yeah, get hold of you through chat. the office, have a chat. Love a good chat about your travel oh, plans, too, your right. flights. Yeah, I, I think that... Yeah, you're such a cool perspective on the types of camps, the situations that you went through, and you still had an incredible time when you're going yeah, back. Definitely. So any questions, be sure to ring up, drop an email, fire them in. But yeah, again, thanks very much for jumping on. I love that. That's some really cool things. And uh yeah, hopefully chat again I'll soon. Be busy posting all TikToks all summer. There you go, get following. Oh, get gosh. following. <laughs> Cheers.
Thanks for listening to the Camp Leaders podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to pop us a like and subscribe and follow for more summer camp content.